we should know that qi can be pathological in four different ways. So number one, we know that qi, it could be deficient, right? Like when you're literally overworking yourself or you're eating poorly. So there's qi deficiency. So for example, lung qi deficiency or spleen qi deficiency. Another qi pathology is qi stagnation. That's literally involving the movement of qi. So qi stagnates and it causes issues like liver qi stagnation or stomach qi stagnation. Another qi pathology is rebellious qi. This is where qi goes in the wrong direction, basically the opposite of the organ's natural qi direction. Like for example, the stomach's natural qi direction is to go down, which that makes sense with the direction that food has to go in. We eat, we sit down, food goes in our mouth, goes down our esophagus into our stomach. So the natural qi direction to help that process is downward. And rebellious qi is the qi reversing going upward. And then the last qi pathology that we have is qi sinking. And qi sinking is actually related to qi deficiency. And there's two main organs where qi sinking can happen. The spleen, we know, has a function to hold the organs in place. The spleen has also a function to raise qi, or it says the ascending of qi. Now, another organ that could be involved with qi sinking is the kidney. Now, the kidney it has a function where it says it controls the two lower orifices. These two lower orifices are our urethra and our anus. 